Hey friends, welcome back to the How to Survive Medical School series. In this video, we're talking about maintaining a healthy work-life balance in med school. But I think, to be honest, the tips in this video can be applied to non-medical school as well. But hey, no one watches the second channel anyway, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> if you're watching this, you're probably a medical student. Anyway, we're gonna be talking about work-life balance tips, and I'll start by giving you my own take on this, and then we'll hear from like a bunch of my other friends, similar to the rest of the videos in this series who are offering their own perspective on this idea of work-life balance in med school. Because it's a pretty important thing, right? You know, we're going through med school for like five or even six years. You know, I did six years in med school. I know people who have done 10 years in med school because they did like integrated PhD programs. The whole work-life balance thing is really important. And basically the way that I think about it and used to think about it in med school is sort of like a priority system. And work is sort of the default thing in that priority system, but every single thing else comes above studying. So for example, if there's the opportunity to go out for dinner with friends, that comes above work. If there's the opportunity to go to a new society or to do some event or to do something fun or to have a singing session with some homies, that sounds weird, all of that comes above work. And the priority system is such that only when I have nothing else better that I could be doing, that's when I'm going to be studying. This sort of turns on its head a little bit when you've got a deadline coming up. So let's say I had an essay that was due in tomorrow, then kind of doing that essay would come above everything else. But I think it's, it's, it's sort of like a, a good place to be where you get to the point where you never need to say no to a social obligation because you have to do work. And I, I think when I was in med school, there were only a handful of times where I had to use the excuse of, sorry, I've got too much work in order to not go to something because I was pretty good at not wasting my time when I was free. And therefore, when I was free and had nothing else going on, I could do work. So for example, one rule that I had for myself is that I'm not allowed to watch TV if I'm on my own. And that like, when, when I kind of incorporated that into my life in my second year of med school, that was kind of a game changer because in, in first year and before that in school, I just wasted so much time watching TV shows. And yeah, you know, I enjoyed watching TV shows. I enjoyed watching the Vampire Diaries and Nana 210 and all that stuff. But realistically, I would much rather spend that time doing my work so that when something else interesting is going on, like hanging out with friends or having a board games night or doing something social, I then had the time to do something social. So that's why, you know, for me, it worked that I wasn't allowed to watch TV on my own because if I watched it with friends, it would become a social activity, right? But then everything else would come above the priority for work. And that was my own method for doing work-life balance. Life always came before work, but I avoided wasting time. When I had spare time, I wouldn't just sit there and watch TV, I would do the work so that I could have more time to do more interesting things later on. So those are just some of my thoughts on this topic. Um, we're now gonna get a lot of my other friends. We, all, we, we recorded this when we were all in our final year of med school. Um, they're all junior doctors now along with me, uh, but hopefully this will give you some other perspectives on how to do the work-life balance thing. Because as I said in all the other videos, you know, the way I went through med school is not the only way to go through med school. So, you know, find what works for you check it out and yeah, this is now various friends talking about work-life balance. I'm not very good at this or haven't been very good at this, but you should definitely set yourself sort of a target of being involved in one or two things that you're gonna commit to sort of every week. Um, now that might be something organized like football or netball or whatever, um, or it might be something like going to the cinema once a week with friends or um, just going for a walk. So I, th I think setting yourself um, or committing to to doing something that's just for you, that's completely unrelated to medicine, is really, really important. And I think having some accountability to someone else for that. So I've really found that doing something in a team or in a group has been really helpful because you, you know you're gonna let other people down if you don't go and that kind of forces you to get out even when you've got exams to revise for even when you've got a lot of work to do um it makes you it makes you go out and do it and i without without exception have always felt so much better after i've had some time out to do something else to stop thinking about work and actually probably more productive afterwards for having that time out and i think time management is really key in work life balance so i had um I used to have like, it was like a mouse mat and it had all the days on it. Um, and I used to write on the days what I already had planned. So I could see sort of from the start of the week where I had plans, where I had some gaps in my time and try to fit my work in around that. And so I wouldn't get to like the Sunday night and think, oh my goodness, I've got two essays to write and I'm really stressed now. So I think planning your time 
is a really good skill to develop and that will stand you in good stead for the rest of your life as well. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I, you see, it's, it's strange because because people draw this artificial distinction between work and life. It, it, it is an artificial distinction because sometimes when you enjoy the things which you're doing, it doesn't really feel like such a pain. I think you really feel like you're working when you have a deadline or something you need to do by a certain time, but you're not really enjoying it. Then maybe you ought to ask yourself, why is it that I'm doing this thing? In which case, if the answer is because it is very useful for, 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 for my future career, it is very useful for me, but I need to endure this pain in this moment, then maybe you can frame it in the way that, oh no, this is a short-term thing, I just need to push through it. But if you can see that there's no end in sight and it's just you know a con constant slog, maybe you need to think that, oh, maybe I should be pursuing some other thing instead in which my which contributes towards my future life goals, direction, etc., my development as a person, but also is enjoyable. And so hopefully that won't seem like such a pain and you wouldn't be thinking, oh, this is work, this is life. I want to be done with work so I can get on with life. But it'll hopefully be more you know, amalgamated. So one of the ways I've managed to establish a better work-life balance is to change the way I think about things that aren't work. For example, sleeping enough. Uh, and hang out with friends. Before I might have thought, oh, you know, I can sacrifice those to work on this essay because I really wanna like, you know, nail this essay, uh, even if I have to stay up till 2 a.m. So now, rather than thinking of it as kind of virtuous and great and a sign of hard work, hard work and success, if I'm losing sleep and if I'm not catching up with the people I wanted to be catching up with, um, I try and shift that perspective to a healthier one of thinking actually if I'm well slept and I spend three hours less on this essay that will make me sharper in lectures tomorrow, um, nicer to the people around me because I won't be a massive grump uh, and generally I will have a much nicer day tomorrow and enjoy my life more and at the end of the day the only reason I'm working hard is so I can be happy so if I'm working hard to the extent that it's making me unhappy, that's pretty dumb. The same thing about hanging out with my friends, really. If hanging out with my friends in the evening after a long day's work means that's going to recharge me and mean I can hit the books harder tomorrow, um, then that's worthwhile. If it means that, you know, I've got a nice reminder of um, the nice things in my life after like a really stressful day of hard work, you know, it's worthwhile. Um, so generally, just that shift in perspective bring you back to a reminding yourself why those other parts of life are important really helps me maintain a balance. Uh, I'm not like the best person to ask about this because my work-life balance is heavily skewed towards life instead of work. Um, I... <laughs> this is the problem. Like, I approach university as like a learning experience. Obviously, I'm here to learn. On the other hand, I, this is, a university is such a great place to like start new things and to, you know, develop yourself in other ways. And there are so many opportunities that I'll, I have at Cambridge that I'll never have again. For example, like doing panto or being in an orchestra or like starting sailing um, or windsurfing because when you kind of leave university, it might be very hard or very expensive to start stuff like that. Remember that these opportunities only kind of come now um, and it would be wise to seize them now and as long as you're still like keeping up with the work I would say do as many things as you can <laughs> um, I mean obviously if you're failing then like maybe reconsider your kind of work-life balance and reshuffle your time but it's definitely possible to do like loads of extra things and go out partying and still do well in university without being a genius. Okay, so before we continue, I just want to tell you about this video sponsor and that is Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is the world's leading documentary streaming subscription platform founded by John Hendricks, who's the founder of the Discovery Channel. And on Curiosity Stream, you've got thousands of amazing high quality documentaries covering history, geography, science, technology, medicine, health, nutrition. I've particularly enjoyed their series on the science of nutrition. So as, as a medic, we actually don't learn a lot about healthy eating and like plant-based diet and grains and like the effect that all that has 
on, on our bodies. So if you're into documentaries, you should definitely go to curiositystream.com forward slash Ali and use the coupon code Ali at checkout and that'll give you a 30 day free trial. But even if you're not into documentaries, you should definitely sign up to Curiosity Stream anyway, because they are partnered with Nebula, which is another streaming platform that me and a bunch of other creators are helping to build. And on Nebula, I've got loads of exclusive videos. So I've got a workflow series where I talk through in a deep dive, super nerdy style about my favorite apps that I use on my iPhone, iPad and stuff. And I've also got a series with my friend Simon Clark, who's another YouTuber, he's an Oxford University graduate, and we've got like, you know, a ton of videos answering very specific questions that people sent in via Instagram about study tips. So we cover motivation, procrastination, how to focus, how to not get distracted, along with loads of stuff about how to prepare for exams. And so if you're into this whole preparing for exams thing, you should definitely check that out on Nebula. And as I said, if you sign up to Curiosity Stream, you'll also get free access to Nebula. So definitely go to curiositystream.com forward slash Ali, use the coupon code Ali at checkout, and then you'll get an email with your Nebula login details. So thank you, Curiosity Stream, for sponsoring this video. I mean, I've always had a wide range of interests outside of medicine. That doesn't, you know, not everybody does. But for me, it's it was completely essential to do certain things that weren't medicine. I've always wanted to do sports, for example, tennis, going to the gym. I've always had a bit of an interest in, in sort of playing piano and music, and I've always enjoyed sort of going out with friends. There are some people who in my experience here at Cambridge, just didn't need that. And if you can just work all the time, then that's fantastic. And those people were no less happy than me. They just sort of had work as their main interest. But I think you need to be honest with yourself about whether you're that type of person or whether you're not. Don't try and be someone who works all the time if you know that you need breaks. Similarly, don't let someone tell you that you haven't got a life or you're not getting the most out of university. If you, if you are happy working a lot and you don't have many other interests, there are lots of different ways to, to do medical school and I've seen people be really happy with lots of extracurricular interests and really happy with relatively few. So just make sure you're honest to yourself about what type of person you are and try and stick to it because there is scope to do lots outside of medicine if you're efficient with your time. So I think work-life balance is one of the big difficult questions of medical school and I think everybody can at times swing it one direction or the other. Sometimes you'll be working too hard, sometimes you might take it, take your foot off the pedal a bit too much and then get a bit stressed before exams, that sort of thing. I think everybody has their own balance for them to find. Some people really enjoy working and spending a lot of time doing that. Other people um, prefer that to be one component of their life but to also have lots of other things going on as well. So I think it is a personalized thing about finding you know, your balance, and it does take a lot of time. I personally feel um, my first few years I probably worked too hard, and then in my third year I don't think I worked hard enough. And I feel I started finding my balance around fourth or fifth year. Um, so I guess that's the benefit of having a six year degree because you have a lot of time to test that out um, and find your balance. And I think the main thing that will help you to find a work-life balance is just being aware of what's important to you. Um, like what are your priorities? Is it, do you want to be the one of the best in your medical school? Do you want to be a really academic doctor who knows lots of information and always goes above and beyond? Do you want to be someone who is ambitious in other pursuits outside of medicine itself? Are you someone who much, um, you know, values friends highly and, and want to spend a lot of time with other people? And I think there's a few useful approaches to kind of getting this insight. Uh, there's a couple of interesting ones that I came across. One, one technique I found quite useful is this idea of asking why five times. And what this is, is it's when you're trying to assess your motive, the first answer that you give might not really answer the question. But if you keep on probing it with why, you'll get to the real reason. So for example, I studied really hard in my first few years and I could ask myself, well, why did you study so hard? Well, it's because, you know, I wanted to get a high mark. I said, well, why do you want to get a high mark? It's because I wanted people to see that I was smart. It's like, well, why do you want people to see that you're smart? Because I value, uh, some of my like self-value comes from whether people, other people think I'm smart or not. And it's like, well, why, why, do, why does some of your value come from whether or not you think, other people think you're smart? And it's like, well, that was just kind of something that I experienced at school. Like I was always doing well and it became part of, um, I guess, part of my identity. So then what's, what's the response? Is it to just stop working so hard or is the response to um, ask, well, why, why is that important to you and do you think it should be that important to you? Is it that important to you to becoming top, for example? Um, and I think it's a, really, it's a really broadly applicable technique. You can use it in so many different situations, but that's one example of a time when it's been useful. I've written about that in um, this book as well as a few other techniques. Uh, there's this interesting technique I read about 
um, about how to kind of visualize yourself at your own funeral and what people would be saying about you and that sort of thing. Uh, and I've written about that um, in here as well. Um, but those are, those are some techniques that I found useful for finding work-life balance. I think being using your time well, you don't have to be in nine to five every day at clinical school to get the most out of it if you're being efficient and using your time really well. Uh, you know, sometimes standing around waiting for, for a, a doctor to turn up to a clinic, um, get your Oxford handbook out and do some reading. And that way, when you get home, you don't have to do that reading. You've already done it that you were going to do. That way you can, you can have that time in the evenings to, to really do what you want to do. So I don't do this myself, but something that I've, I know that friends have found really helpful is to have a limit for when you stop working. So you say, at seven o'clock, no more work. I'm gonna do something else to help myself relax. The other thing is just to have a mentality of taking pleasure in the little things. I really enjoy cooking my food. Whereas it's a chore for some people because it takes time and it distracts from work. If I have a different mentality and I just enjoy the process of cooking and enjoy the food at the end, that really gives me a lot of relaxation and respite so that the next day I'm ready uh, to go back into the hospital. All right, thank you for watching. That was some tips about work-life balance in med school slash university. I hope you found that useful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please consider doing so. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.